Thank you very much for the introduction, and um, thanks everyone for for coming to this early session, uh, the day after the party. It's it's very very nice to see uh, everyone who's here and and online as well. Uh, so my name is Jeff Blossom. I'm GIS Service Manager with the Center for Geographic Analysis at Harvard University, and I'm here to talk about uh, something we call RINCS, a solution for information extraction from big raster data sets. Uh, very briefly, more a little, a little bit more about our center. Uh, at Harvard University, there, there is no geography department. Um, so we're kind of the place that people come to for help with geospatial analysis and uh, getting maps made. Um, we're just a small group, just four people full time with, with several affiliated researchers at any given moment. And our mission is cultivating spatial thinking and education, applying emerging, emerging geospatial technologies in support of research, and advancing um, geographic information science through, through innovation. Uh, so we're, we're part of what's called the Institute for Quantitative Social Science, which is a, a larger group of, of mostly uh, statisticians doing work in social science. But we help anyone at the university, so whether it's the uh, faculty of Arch Arts and Sciences, or the, the law school, or the business school, or the School of Public Health. We, we help anyone who needs help with uh, using G GIS, or geographic information science, in uh, their classes or their research. It's a map of where we are on campus, right close to Harvard Yard, in a nice uh, modern building, and our office there on the, uh, the basement level of, of that building. Uh, so, the project I'm going to talk to today involves work with public health researchers. And um, this, this group is, is, um, is following the cohort called um, Project Viva. And, and this is essentially um, you know, supporting health studies for, for the next generation. And the objective of this study is to improve the health of mothers and their children by looking at and examining the social and environmental factors um, where they live. Uh, so we've helped the Project Viva with um, several geographic variables, lots of um, you know, demographic data that we've pulled for them in terms of where the, the members of this cohort live. Uh, we've looked at air pollution, and now we've also embarked on looking at climate-related climate environmental exposures um, at the address level. So all of this is happening sort of you know, where the subjects in the study live. And so the, the method that I'll describe today is how we, we extracted uh, climate variables at member addresses um, over, uh, over their entire childhoods, pretty much a 17-year a um, period. Um, this, is, this is part of an overall project called, called ECHO, uh, which is Environmental Influences on Child Health Outcomes that involves um, about 70 different cohorts across the United States at dozens of different universities, and I'll talk a little bit more how this fits into the ECHO program as we, as we go along. Um, so this, this group of mothers and children, there's about 2,000 of them, and over um, a 19-year period, the, the birth dates for the children were 1999 to 2002, and of these 2,000 or so members, they've lived at 4,796 addresses, over the 17-year period that we, that we studied. And so to, to make this all possible, of course, having an accurate address history for every member uh, is really important. And this is the, the structure of the, of the address data that um, has been geocoded into latitude-longitude coordinates. And we, we have a de-identified um, address um, identifier for each subject. So you see here, the first row is for subject one, and that's their first address, um, the latitude, longitude, and then the, the date that they lived there, the date they moved in, in YYMMDD format, and then the date that they, that they uh, moved out. And then you see the second row is also for subject number one, and you see that they lived in a different place for that time period. Uh, so so this, is, you know, this was built by the, the health research team, and this is what we used for our our climate data extraction. Um, these latitude longitudes are uh, random locations. They're not actual patient locations, I must mention that. Um, so what this, 
turned out as is over 10 million what we call patient days. Every day a patient lived at a certain location. We call that one patient day and we needed to extract that many, um, that many days of, of data from the climate data set. Um, the climate data set we use is called PRISM, Parameter Elevation Regressions on Independent Slopes Model. It essentially takes um, some 30 or 40,000 uh, weather station readings across the U.S. on a daily basis and then interpolates these seven different variables to an 800 meter resolution uh, map. Um, precipitation, min, mean, max temperature, vapor pressure deficit, and also the dew point temperature are the seven variables produced by this uh, PRISM climate group out of Oregon State University. So they've done this now for, for 40 years, going back to 1981. The, the 2021 data uh, is also available as well. And this is just for the, the lower 48. So the 48 contiguous United States is, is where they, they do this analysis. Like I said, it's, it's, um, it's quite high resolution, 800 meter resolution. And these are just, these are rasters. They're dot, dot .bil format, uh, standard raster format. And the entire data set consists of over 100,000 individual rasters covering the, the whole US. Uh, about 85 megabytes each for a total of eight terabytes of, of data. This project, we didn't utilize that entire eight terabytes. Um, the study years we were interested in is just 18 years, 19 years rather, and that consisted of about three and a half terabytes of, of data. Here's a look at the um, PRISM data for the, the, the lower 48 US. This is just one day, one variable, uh, mean temperature on January 1st, 1981. And this is, this is shown in, in degrees Celsius here. So you can see that the variation across the, the US in terms of temperature on that one day. And that 800 meter pixel resolution was important to us because we're looking at this address level uh, we want to get as, as discrete as, as possible. There's other, you know, one kilometer and four kilometer climate data sets, uh, but we, we went with the 800 meter because of its high spatial resolution. So in doing this extraction, we, we looked at a few different methods. Um, this, this can be done in, in R, using the extract R command to, to process the, the rasters, and a, um, a, a group um, at MIT actually did this and we, we talked to them about, about their process and we tested it on our own system. And for, uh, for one climate variable for 14 years using uh, four kilometer resolution data, uh, it took them two to three weeks to, to process um, a little over a thousand shapefiles of, of US uh, zip code data. Um, we looked at ArcGIS as, as well um, extract multi-value to points is, is a command in ArcGIS that will, that will do this. And with scripting in Python, then it can be um, scripted to, to run over uh, multiple rasters and multiple input points. Um, and colleagues of ours did this and found that to process seven monthly climate variables for 34 years for 2.4 million input address locations, uh, it took a little, a little over a week. So we wanted to... Um, come up with a process that was more efficient than this and improved on these methods. We wanted to see if we could do this extraction and get it down into the, uh, the realm of, of hours or, or days to, to perform this. So the challenges here, um, you know, local resources just weren't sufficient enough when, you, when you're working with nearly four terabytes and 10.3 million, you know, extractions, uh, this, we found you know, we needed more than just a, a desktop computer to, to run this. Uh, so you know, looking at cluster computing is, is kind of what, what drove that. And you know, a single operator is insufficient and using a, a combination of spatial operators was uh, kind of what we determined um, needed to happen. So the, the steps of, of doing this process, um, certainly we, we thought you know, doing this in a database is going to be much faster. Um, almost anything runs faster once you load it into a database as, as opposed to just running, running files off of the uh, operating system. 
We needed to be able to load the climate rasters and patient addresses, and then do this extraction of the seven variables from each raster uh, for all locations for all days. Additionally, the researchers we are working with wanted relative humidity and absolute hum humidity calculated. And from the mean temperature and from the mean dew point temperature, there's a formula that you can calculate humidity with. So we built that into our, our model. Of course, we wanted to, to automate this and then, and then scale it uh, because you know, we, we were doing this just for one cohort with about 5,000 address locations. But the goal here is to use this system for multiple cohorts as the need arises as we move forward with the, the project. So we turn to the, the PostGIS extension for PostgreSQL. Um, this is an open source object relational database. It's um, CPU based. There's, there's just a few GPU based functions, but the CPU functions are, are what we utilized in this case. Uh, there's over 500 spatial data processing tools, and it has advanced raster um, processing capabilities. The other thing we have at our disposal at Harvard is the, the, the cluster uh, called the FAS Research Computing uh, Cluster. The FAS stands for the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. It's kind of the, the, the main school at Harvard when you think about Harvard University. All the undergraduates go to this Faculty of Arts and Sciences. Our group is, is part of that as well, so we have access to this cluster. It's 1,000 compute nodes at 8 to 64 cores per node, 12 gigabytes to 812 gigabytes of memory per node. Um, we ended up only needing um, 2 gigabytes of, of, of RAM for each job that we ran. It's Linux CentOS 7. It's, it runs the Slurm job manager. It also has singularity, so, so one can uh, containerize their, their job. And there's over about a thousand different softwares and, and tools loaded onto the system that are available for, for use. Uh, tons of storage. We, we actually had eight terabytes of, of lab storage through the School of Public Health. Um, and this is number 144 in the top 500 supercomputers in the world. So, so we had this, this great resource at our disposal with, um, with PostgreSQL running on it. And my, my colleague, um, Devika, Devika Jain, is, is the programmer. Um, so she wrote the code. And this is just kind of the, the basic overview of what it does. It, it inputs the climate rasters and the addresses, uses uh, shell scripts to load those into the database. Once they're in PostGIS, then all the extraction happens. And then it um, exports the climate variables for each address location for each day that's then used for um, statistical research by the, the health professionals. A little bit more detailed architectural diagram here that's um, a, little, a little small, a little hard to read perhaps, but I guess I just want to point out the, the PostGIS part of this. We're using these ST commands here, value, transform, set SRID, intersects, um, transform again, envelope, and then point um, is, is what's running here in, in PostGIS. And it's, it's a very elegant solution. It's just using bash, one bash script, script and then one SQL script within PostGIS to, to do this automation. So then the results. This is a, a look at um, some of the, the results here for you know, subject number one here. The, the result is essentially a text file, comma delimited text file with uh, the address ID, then the, the day of observation you see the first day there is November 28th, 1999. The second, second row then is November 30th, um, 1999, and, and so on. And then the seven variables, precipitation, the temperature variables, uh, the vapor pressure. And then at the end, the RH and AH, relative humidity and absolute humidity, those were then calculated from the extracted uh, raster variables. Uh, so the results here, um, 10.3 million patient days of calculation. And this is, you know, these are patient days. So this was, there's actually seven different rasters per day for each variable. So really it's, it's over, you know, over 70 million um, observations, you know, weather observations daily. Uh, it took us 
It takes about one day, about 24 hours, to load all the rasters for this 19-year period into uh, the database. And then to run these, these extractions took um, pretty much four full days running on, on the system. Um, and, and this doctor here, Dr. Um, Nicholas Nasikas, is, is, is using this climate data and, and he, he gave us a quote here to use. The, the PRISM climate data extracted by the CGA allowed us to study associations of precipitation, relative humidity, and temperature with lung function in children. The climate data will also allow us to study similar associations in adults. There's a need to determine if short-term exposures to these weather conditions affect the respiratory health of children and adults, especially in the context of of a, uh, a changing climate. Um, so there's, there's currently two different um, research papers being conducted, one at the School of Public Health, one at the Harvard Medical School. Uh, that's going to expand to, to many more. The, I guess I, what I want to point out here is that it's, it's, a, it's a solution that can be replicated. And, and this is important when dealing with public health data. The cohort I'm describing here is a Harvard cohort. We, we use the address data on the Harvard servers, on a secure Harvard system. Um, as, a, as an analyst, my, myself and, and Devika Jane, we both had to be added to the, the IRB to work with this, public, this private health data. Uh, but the ECHO program extends across several dozen universities, and the data will have to reside on those university um, systems um, because of health protection uh, rules. So allowing others to, to use this extraction program, whether they're running uh, Linux or Windows or Mac OS, you know, PostGIS will run on any of those, and the climate data can be loaded as well. Uh, so this can really be extended to, to any system uh, that, we, that we want. And this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg here. There's uh, 70 different cohorts that are being studied at different universities, and we're all, you know, they, they, they're all interested in extracting the, the climate data for their address locations. Um, and in terms of being scalable, we, we have, you know, we've started working on another address location data set of about 15,000 uh, addresses, and um, we're going to then, you know, use this script and we'll kind of monitor how long it takes to do those extractions, and that's over about an 18-year period as well. Uh, so for this work, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge um, doctors Diane Gold and Emily Oaken. They, they made, this, made this possible. Uh, they they su support us with, with um, the grant funding you see listed there. Um, our colleague Wendy Guan at the CGA as well, and um, Heike Gibson, a data analyst with the School of Public Health, all contributed towards this work. And Devika Jane, you see pictured here, uh, was really excited to come to this, this conference. Her schedule wouldn't allow it though, so, so I'm the one um, here presenting today. But she did the hard work in terms of scripting all of this, testing it. I was more the, the guinea pig, testing her scripts and, and seeing if they ran or not. And all the troubleshooting I, I left up to, up to her. Um, the PRISM climate data uh, is is, is something that the Oregon State University team puts together every year. It's mainly for the United States Department of Agriculture to, to look at agricultural uh, impacts and impacts to farmers over the, over the years in the US, but they also sell this data. Um, the 800 meter data we use, we did purchase, but they put out a four kilometer resolution product that is uh, free. And with our solution, which I don't think I fully uh, mentioned it here, it's we call it RINCS, which stands for um, Raster Information Extraction. And, and so this, this solution then, you know, you don't have to use it on this specific set of rasters. It can work on any set of rasters. And as, as our world is, uh, you know, there's more satellites with Earth observational data being collected on a daily basis. And with solutions like this, we, we hope others will be able to use this for any kind of raster data. Um, we're in the process of putting our code on, on GitHub, and we'll make an announcement when that happens. Um, I, I failed to put our website up here, gis.harvard.edu, and once we put our code on GitHub, we'll make an announcement there. Um, so I'm happy to take questions. I appreciate everyone paying attention, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much.